Good evening. The, the title of this is This Girl Remembers 9-11. And I do. It's been 18 years, but I remember everything exactly the, that day. From what happened in New York and Washington right down to my own memories. And this is going to be my own memories. That morning, I woke up at about 5.30. I live on third floor, and my apartment was hot and sticky and muggy. So, and I couldn't sleep. So I decided, okay, the heck with this. I'm going to get up, go curl up on the couch, turn on the TV, and turn on the air conditioning. At least if I can get some cool air blowing over me, I'll sleep. And I did. I fell asleep. And I slept. Until I heard Matt Lauer say, Oh my God, very loudly over the air. The TV was low, but I came awake like somebody shot me. And I woke up disorientated, and I thought, what the heck am I watching? What did I put in the VCR? It was the second plane crashing into the second tower at World Trade Center. And it scared the heck out of me. And once I realized what was going on, I sat and I watched, and I watched, and I watched, and couldn't believe my eyes. And then all of a sudden they come up with, a plane just crashed into the Pentagon. Oh my God, what the heck? Oh, that day was horrible. But along with that, it brought a lot of people up from living daily lives to looking at the real world. And the real world was, our real world was changing. And it changed huge. Let's talk about some things for me. One of the things was all the young men that were killed over in Iraq and in Afghanistan were coming home to a wicked church protesting at their funerals. And if you don't know what church I'm talking about, you'll have to do some research because I'm not going to name them. But we called them the uninvited guests. And because of the uninvited guests, I joined the Patriot Guard. This is my Minnesota patch. And this is my biker vest. I'm very proud of this patch. I don't ride as much as I used to because I get on a motorcycle now and I can't get off. My arthritis will lock me up tight and I'm stuck. But I stood five missions and most of them were day-long missions. You were there from 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning until 5, 6 o'clock at night. What we did was we protected the family from seeing all the posters and the ugly things that church was saying about our young men who were coming home with a flag draped over their coffins. And every one of those missions stands out in my head, and it will always. But I thought I'd show you my biker's vest because there are some things that I'm really proud of. But this is one of them, my Patriot Guard patch. I'm going to show you my pins. Because everybody knows a biker has more pins on their vest than anything else. And I can't show you my other one. My bar vest would get me kicked off of YouTube and every other place. 
But let's talk about this. This is my name. And this pin and this pin and this pin are kind of the old time pins that kids wore back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s when Vietnam was going on. This pin is from a friend of mine who ran a memorial called the Everyday Heroes 9-11. Since God bless America, and it stays on my vest, and it always will. This pin was also given to me shortly after that. And it's an angel with the American flag on it. This Harley pin? Y'all may laugh, but this Harley pin was on my cowboy hat. And I'm real proud of it. And this pin was given to me by a friend. Now what's on the back of my vest? I want to show you because the, the biggest thing I'm proud of is something that I made. Be back in a minute. Did you honestly think I was going to show you the biggest thing first? This is a memorial patch. And almost every biker that I know has at least one of these. This is Mike Deltoid Bland. He was from down south. Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Florida, someplace. His famous saying was, it's all good. He died on February 22nd, 2008. I carry this patch because I carry his memory with me. My POW patch, MIA patch. This is bring them home or send us, send us back. If you were growing up in the Vietnam era, you know what this means to a lot of us. My Harley patch. Now I'm gonna flip up my pride and joy. This is my eagle. For a lot of you that don't know, I do embroidery. I took a picture of an eagle and I traced it out on very heavy interface. Heavy enough that you really had to have a good embroidery hoop. And I did all the stitching, every ounce of it. Yeah, there's a lot of work in here. But you will notice that it looks very realistic. My ego is my pride and joy. And it will always be my pride and joy. As soon as it was finished, and all the little stitching along the edges was done, it was washed and it was ironed, and stiffener was put on the back to make it a little tighter. But this is my patch. There isn't another one like it anywhere in this world because it's made by hand. Back to 9-11. After watching hours and hours of all this, I cried for hours. I mean, I was really choked up. And then it comes over that Flight 93 crashed in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. It was aimed at the Capitol or the White House or someplace like that. But a group of passengers decided to get the terrorists and they stood up and they fought. And one of those passengers was Thomas Edward Barnett Burnett Jr. He's a hero and he's from Minnesota. He's buried at Fort Snelling Cemetery. And Minnesota couldn't be prouder that we had somebody that took the initiative to keep them from killing any more people, even though everybody on that plane died. 
Very proud of you, Tom. You did the right thing. Anybody that lives in Minnesota will remember the day after, especially if you live in the Twin Cities area. For all of you that don't remember, it was a no-fly zone over the entire United States for at least 24 hours, probably more like 72. There wasn't a plane in the sky anywhere. And about 11.30, 12 o'clock, the sky started roaring here. And I live about a mile from Crystal Airport or something like that. And I was like, what the hell was that? The birds were scared. My birds were scared. So I quick covered them out up and went out on the deck. And right over the top of us is F-16s. And I mean, they were so low you could have reached out and shook hands with the pilot. And they're hot dogging or tailing a float plane. A float plane. It was a no fly zone. But some dork took off in a float plane from a lake. Like he wasn't going to be seen. Duh. And they scrambled out F-16s from Duluth. And honey, them babies are loud. They came right over the top of my complex. And it was like sonic booms constantly. Boom, boom, boom. And I don't know if it was the afterburners or whatever, but they were trying to get this little yellow float plane to land. And they finally got him to land. I mean, they were right on his butt. If they had been any closer, they'd been inside the compartment with him. But it scared the daylights out of everybody, especially me. You're not supposed to fly in the no-fly zone. Hello. That day will live in my memory. 9-11 will live in my memory for the rest of my life. Kids now don't get why us older folks are upset by it. It's the same way as the day Pearl Harbor was bombed for our parents. It lives in their memory. They remember every blessed thing. Well, 9-11 is our memory. And it will never, ever leave. I just want to say... For everyone that watches this, if you ever get a chance, go see the healing field. It's flags with boots of every person. Go to the World Trade Center. Go find the little towns that have pieces of the World Trade Center in their town square. Go stand by it and look at it and remember. That day changed our world. And it changed it some for the good, some not for the good. Be proud of your country. Be proud of where you live. We've got more freedom than any other country in the world. Be proud of that. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great week. Bye.